about the COVID cleansing. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to integrate people with Django, you understand? So we have our e-commerce series continues, you understand? So this is the home page. I can simply add to cards. Once I get out to cards, my card gets updated at the top. Add to cards. Understand? Add to card. It works. So I can simply go down to the card page. You can see we have three items with a total of $82.75, you understand? So I can check out and make PayPal via and I can check out and make payments via PayPal or through my debit or credit card. Understand? So let's click on the checkout button. So we are on the checkout page right now. It's still loading. Okay, you can see we have our we have our payment buttons. We have the PayPal and the credit and the debit or credit card option. Understand? So we can pick whichever one you want. So I'm going to go with the PayPal. So click on the PayPal button is kind of loading okay it's done loading you can see now we have a total of 82 dollars to pay just check down here you can see it correlates they are both the same so just scroll down you have to log into your PayPal account before you could make this payment so you click on pay now so it's gonna load up and process the payment it's processing so you can see our payment has been made successfully click on the OK button it's time we have been brought back to the home page and can see that our cart is now empty that shows that we've made payments we've paid for the goods we bought so in this video i'm going to show you how to integrate paypal with django without further ado we are getting started right now okay before i proceed i'd love to review my code understand so you can see i made a new view called checkout this view is very very similar to our cart view our cart view is just above just scroll a bit to the top you can see the cart view they are similar to each other so it has a store view just scroll down okay, here's the cart view it's very similar to the checkout view you understand so after i've done this now how to create a simple html page for our checkout view so this is the html page you understand and that's what you see that's what i'm going to simply go down to that page right now you can see now click on on this cart item click on checkout is our checkout view you understand it's still empty there is no item in the cart that's why you can say everything is still empty so now let's start now with integrating paypal for this before i proceed i need to add some items to our cart go down to the home page just add we're going to add orange shares we're going to add okay for i before you can add to carts you must make sure you logged in you stand that's how it works you must make sure you are logged in to the admin so let's try log i'm going to simply create a super user and get logged in to the admin so let's do that right away so i'm going to go down here create a super user so now let's create a super user run the command python managers by create super user so i'm going to give it a, i'm going to give the super user a username of john so i'm going to give it a password a simple password and after that just yes and we'll simply run server again so after i've done this now i think i can log in to the admin page before i can add to cart it must be logged in that's how i built it this is not the right way you just can add to cart without them being signed in that's the best way but for this tutorial i just had to make things simple you understand so now let's go down to the admin section and make sure john is logged in so i'm gonna simply log in john sorry for that so login okay john is logged in now you can add to cart so click on the add to cart button before you do that refresh the page so that the changes can reflect so click on the add to cart button you can see you can add you can now add to cart click on the cart icon so you get so you can get to the cart page so on the cart page now we have two items a total of 51 dollars click on checkout so we, here we are on the checkout page understand now so once it's a great paypal to this project so you can make payments through paypal or the debit or credit card so let's do that right away okay let's continue i mean the source code for this project you find this in the description of this video you're gonna get the source code in the, in the description of the video so for sit now go down to, the, to your browser and simply search for paypal paypal developer api so just do a, a, little, a little search on paper developer api so my is taking quite some time so once the browser is open just scroll down the bits you're gonna find paper payment api so click on this payment api so you need to use the payment api so 
just click on the link open it so the page is now open click on the payments so after you've clicked on payments open this link paypal checkout basic integration so we're going to open the link right now so it's loading so now we are on the page don't worry i'm going to put the link in the description of this video i'm going to put the links in the description of the video so don't worry about doing the search yourself you understand so just scroll down to the bottom scroll down to the bottom of the page so open this link test the button code in the interactive mode so i'm going to open this link so it should be open right away okay it's loading my network is kind of slow okay it's open you can see here's the paper button so now i'm going to simply copy this code this code on the right hand side i'm going to copy and do a basic explanation on it in a stance so i'm going to copy just the code i'm going to copy the script part of the code not everything so just copy the script section so i'm going to copy this and do a basic explanation okay let's copy everything from not just the script section I'm gonna copy this from this div down to the closing script tag at the bottom. Okay, just copy Ctrl C and come down to the VS Code right away. So I'm gonna make this smaller. Go to the view. So what we copied now, I'm gonna paste it on the checkout.html page. Yes, this is the checkout page. I'm gonna show you again forgotten this is a checkout page where we have the paper button in the stand so i'm going to simply paste that the code we copies from the paper website just paste it at the bottom of the page at the bottom just before the end block so i'm going to post that paste that here okay we have it pasted already so it's already pasted okay so everything is nice looking good so this div you have here this is where the paper button is going to be placed so i'm going to copy remove i'm going to remove this div from this location it's going to simply cut it and take it upwards i want the div to be right under this you're almost done shopping so and that is at the top so i'm going to just scroll to the top where we have that's you can see we can see where we have you're almost done shopping so i'm going to paste that div just you can see the, the div is already pasted here. This is the div just at the bottom of this H2 tag. You understand? So, done already. So, just save your work now. Let's see if it's going to get implemented. Let's just see. Refresh the page. It's going to take quite. So you can see now we have the buttons on the page, but the buttons are not functional. They are not working yet. So, before they work, we're going to create some sandbox accounts on the PayPal. Sandbox account are simple a simply dummy account why why are we using a dummy account because this is a tutorial i'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to use real paper account. i'm going to use dummy account which are also called sandbox account on paypal understand so before i proceed i love to explain the code i copied i love to do a brief explanation on this code for you to understand what is going on in the background understand so this is simply the link to the paypal api this is simply the link this script tag on top so this paypal.buttons is what we have at the top why i copy to the top this paypal button this is where the buttons are simply placed in the stand so after we've done that just you can see we have this function called create order this function helps to create our order and it's at this point you're going to put in the value of our shopping cart the value of the goods we bought this way i'm going to piece the total cost of the of the goods we purchase understand and the order function called unapproved now at this point the transaction is being processed this is where the transaction the transaction is being processed just at this on approve function stand so that's it now so once once everything has been done what i also want to do now i want to create some sandbox account on paypal so i'm going to show you how to do that so let's start now okay so what we need to do now is simple simply go down to the browser and search for paypal sandbox accounts paypal sandbox account spell account wrongly okay you see already no problem so it's loading okay almost open 
okay what i was actually to do is that once you get down to this page you might be asked to log in just simply create a simple just simply create a paypal account log in understand so you can see i'm logged in you can see my name up here understand so go to paypal sandbox account just log into your account that's it so once you're on your account now just scroll down a bit you can see we are asked to create accounts understand we have to create account okay now we're going to create two accounts we're going to create a personal account and a business account the personal account is the buyer we are creating the buyer's account you understand why the business account is simply the seller's account you understand the buyer pays why the seller receives the money that's what i'm trying to do you understand so now let's create just click on create account button create accounts okay so now i'm going to click on create custom accounts we are creating the personal you can see from here i'm creating the personal account first so click on create custom accounts create custom accounts so just scroll down a bit scroll down a bit scroll down a bit okay so i'm going to put in an email address an email address i'm going to call this personal i'm going to call it personal two two at gmail.com this, this is what we call sandbox account they are not real account they are kind of fake accounts you can call them dummy accounts understand so it says email already exists i'm going to simply say personal jungle tutu personal jungle tutu i don't think it should be available okay it's available so now i'm going to put a password it said 8 to 20 characters putting a simple password okay so i'm going to leave everything blank and i'm going to put in some balance for this personal account i'm going to simply put in i'm going to put in let's say 500 dollars there okay after you've done that now click on create accounts click on save create account so it's going to create this account for us okay scroll down you can see it's trying to, it's trying to process the account personal jungle 22 at gmail.com you can see i have other accounts here this is what i've done before so now it's processing the account just created we're going to put another account now called for the seller and that's going to be the business account understand so click on i'm going to wait for some time for this to process finish but let's try creating another account for the business which is the seller oh okay now click on business understand click on create custom account okay just scroll down a bit i'm going to put in the email address for the i'm going to put in the email address put in business so don't forget and let's put in the email address for the business i'm going to simply say business django22 at gmail.com business django22 at gmail Dot com. My email is valid. So I can type. Okay. So I'm gonna put in a password, simple password. Now scroll down. I'm gonna put in a balance for the business account. I'm gonna say put in, let's say seven hundred dollars. So after we've done that, now to the bottom, click on. You can see the create account button. Create accounts. create accounts okay just scroll down a bit you can see our personal account has been processed now we are trying to process the business account so it's gonna take quite some time so I'm gonna wait for this to get processed I'm gonna pause the video while it gets processed okay the two accounts has been created we have the first one for the personal pants personal jungle 22 at gmail.com and the second one for the business which is business jungle 22 at gmail.com so i'm going to open these two accounts so let's view the accounts and let's see some things about this account so it's loading so on the view okay that's is the account right there okay can i scroll down okay you can see everything about the account let's see the funding of this account you know i placed 500 dollars for the okay the personal account has seven hundred dollars in it. Okay, let's check the business accounts. 
let's see how much we have there you know i place that myself customly you understand so check the funding let's see how much we have there we also have 700 dollars there okay i think i placed one 500 dollars so i don't know why let's check the personal again let's see how much we have there okay click on funding it should be 500 okay 500 right so that's it now after we've done this now we're going to create an app so just come to the top here you can see we have my apps and credentials so click on it click on my apps and credentials it's kind of taking time to load okay you can see now we are on the page working you can see now we have sandbox we have live if you want to go live simply if you want to use real paper accounts you just simply click on live but now we are using sandbox accounts which are dummy accounts so we are going to use so we can see we are on the sandbox section so just scroll down a bit click on create app please load up don't waste my time okay create app that's nice so i'm going to call this app let's just call it Django, I'm not going to simply call it Django e-commerce, e-commerce, okay, so you just scroll down, you can see we are putting for the business account, which is business Django 22 at gmail.com, so click on create app, and the create app button, okay, so it's still loading, so our app has been created it's called django e-commerce can see it's at the, at the at the center at the middle so just simply let's scroll down a bit okay simply open the django e-commerce app okay so try loading fast okay now we are on the app now just scroll down you can see we have this client id this time we're going to con we're going to use this client id to connect our button to the sandbox account to understand we what is going to connect the buttons to the sandbox account so just simply copy this client id you know copy it control c come down to the code come down to your code now and go down to where we have the link the api link just on top here you can see the link here understand so where we have test remove the test you have there remove the test so after we're going to put id equal to the client id you know we've copied it so you just simply paste this time we've pasted the client id save like that so we've connected the buttons to the sandbox account we created so after you've done this now you can start working you can start our work proper so now what are we going to do now what i want to do is i want to get i want to get the our cat total i want to get this total price we have here so am i gonna do that it's not difficult so just come down to the javascript aspects just in the script tag here i'm gonna simply create a new variable called i'm gonna say let total equal to i'm gonna simply put i'm gonna use the Jam, django templates variables tag in the stand so now i'm gonna simply do this Sorry, what am I doing? Okay, so now if you look carefully to my views of Pi-Fi, you can see just at the bottom at the checkout view, you can see I already passed my cards into the view, and you can see the cart is in context. And so I can easily assess the attribute of these cards. And so these are our cards. So if I check the models of Pi Fi, you're gonna see more info. Models of Pi Fi. Models of Pi open. I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom. You can see this is our this is the cat model. Understand? And I want to assess this grand total attributes. So I'll just come down to my views, to my checkout HTML. And don't forget I already passed my cat in the context so you can assess my I can assess that cat in this particular page i'll simply say cat dot grand total so i've simply gotten the grand total of the cards 
so I'm going to console this on the console to be sure if we actually got the cat total. I'm going to simply say console.log console.log total. This is JavaScript. For those that don't understand JavaScript, it's not that difficult. So now refresh the page and go down to the console. I'm going to go down to the console. Expect. Oh, click on console. You can see now we have the cat total 51.87, and that's what we have on top here. If you look carefully on top at the top, perfect. Now, so what I have to do now is this I'll simply pass that total, go down to the, your code again. This total, I'm going to pass the total to this place here. So put the total here, total. Yeah, so I want to make sure this total does not exceed two decimal places so now i'm going to simply do this pass floats this is javascript terminologies pass floats total our variable dot to fixed two i mean it's not going to exceed two decimal places so after i've done this everything is kind of working fine we can simply say we are done with the tutorial but we are not done yet so what i want to do is i want to send this total this total we created i want to send it to the back end understand so that we can verify that this total corresponds to what we have in the back end if it does not correct so I want to make sure it corresponds because some malicious user can come in and they can use the inspect elements to change the total so you don't want that to happen so I'm going to send this total to the back end using the fetch API I guess you have been familiar with that by now so I'm going to use the fetch API to send the total to the back end so now let's do that right away so I'm going to scroll down the bottom create a new script tag script tag okay pick a new script tag okay this is done okay now i'm gonna call this function um, payments yeah so now i'm gonna need to fetch api to send it out to the back end so let's do that right away okay so we are going to use a fetch api to send the total to the back end i told you why we need to i told you why we need to send it to the back end so we can do some cross checking make sure that the total in the front end is the same thing what we have on the back end stand so now how we're going to do we're going to use fetch api to send this data to the back end so let's just simply come here go down to your browser i'm so just search for fetch api click on the first link okay so now we are bring on the documentation just scroll down a bit a bit a bit a bit oh is it this link or a different link okay sorry go back i think it should be the second link okay we're gonna scroll a bit okay just copy this just to save time control c so just paste in there instead of this function called payment okay paste that now so i'm going to create a view where you want to send this data to we want to send it to tab to so we're going to create a view go down to views.pyfy so create a new view i'm going to call this view you can call it any name you like i'm going to call the view payment but you can call the view whatever name you like so i'm going to call this view payment def payment so we're going to so this view is going to return in json response understand because we're going to send it up we are trying to send it up on the front end to the back end. So it's going to be returning a JSON response, not a template. So I'm going to simply say return JSON response. Oh, is that? Okay, return JSON response. I'm going to simply say data sent. So I'm going to simply say it's working. You see, if, it, if, if everything goes well, this is going to get printed on the console it's working is going to get printed it is working and so after we've done that we're going to simply set for safe equal to false so perfect now so we're going to create a url mapping for this particular view we're going to, we're going to create a url mapping for this view function go down to your URLs of pi fi let's create the urls simply say parts i'm going to call this payment simply say views dot payment 
I'm gonna put the name out to put the code to payments. Perfect, everything working fine. So save your work now. Okay, go down to the card.html. So let's continue with the coding. Check card.html. Okay, everything fine now. So you can see we want to send this data to the back end. So we're gonna put in the actual data we want to send to the back end. So now I'm gonna call this. I'm gonna say cat total. I'm gonna call this cat total. That's a variable, the key cat total. So cat total is simply the key. This is not the actual value. So the actual value is what we call total. You can see I already declared that on top. Total, what we have here, you understand? So I'm gonna set cat total be equal to total total. Okay, perfect. So now we are going to create a new variable called URL. So we are going to create a variable. So the URL is going to be mapping down to the view function we created, which is this payment. You understand? So come down this page again. So now let's create a URL. Let's call it. I'm going to simply say let URL equal to. So now we are going to put in the name attributes which is what we have here this payments what we're going to put in so we're going to simply do url and say payments so we are pointing down to this view function we have here understand so that's it now so after we've done all this okay we're going to simply remove this the url we have here we're going to put in our own url we've created so remove the yeah that's it now so we have our method depot to post the headers everything working fine you can see this variable we created called data we have to pass it down to the body and we have to stringify it we have to, we have to convert it from an object to a string so we stand after that we turn a json response and at the last dot then we have to return the actual data and if there's an error we return the sketch function which shows an error if there's an error but we hope there won't be an error understand so i think everything should be working before we proceed we need to pass in this particular stuff i'm gonna copy it from the other ones i've done before i've talked about this several times what was it called again from we're gonna pass in no we are trying to send data using django we need to pass in some cxrf token so in a previous tutorial I, sh I talked about this so i'm going to simply copy this i'm not going to talk on i'm not going to talk much on it i'll simply copy some of my other javascript from, from the other functions i've done before so i'm going to simply copy this from here Control c bring it down to the card.html page and pass it under the content type okay everything should be working fine now everything should be working absolutely fine so i'm going to call this function at the bottom and initially we need to call the function you can see the function is called payments i'm going to let's say send payment i think that is better or uh, make payments make payment functions i'm going to call it at the bottom of the page call it just yeah make payments Okay, that's perfect. So now we save your work. Go down to the console again. So we're gonna refresh. So just simply click on inspect console. Refresh the page. Oh, we're having an error. We're having an error. So I'm gonna check what this error is. So from the terminal we have an error said not found url payments so there's a problem with this url so go down to the view to the to the top again i can't find okay there's a problem with the url i should have added the percent symbol i forgot okay what's happening percent Okay, let's simply put payments in between. Control X. Okay, sorry for the mistake and everything, the delays. 
Oh, that was up me. Okay, I get the scope now. Payment. So save now and go down to the console again. Refresh. Click on the console. Perfect. And see, see, success is working. So now we can send this data to the. We can send this data to the web. We can send it to the back end. And everything is working fine. We want to make sure that this make payment function is called whenever we want to, whenever we click on the button in the stand. So I'm going to remove it from here. Take it to the top. Take, I'm going to take it to the on approve function. On approve this particular function and place it here. So it should be at this at this section. So so now we are going to paste it here. Oh, at the bottom of this page, that's where it should be. Okay, so whenever we try to make payments, we want to make sure that this function is being called. Okay, that's it now. So I'm going to go down to the views.pyfy. Okay, so we are going to get the data we sent from the front end to the back end. We're going to simply put the variable called data equal to json.loads. json.loads. I'm going to simply say json.loads requests.body. Understand? And this body refers to the variable I created. Just look here to the variable. You can see the variable from the checker.html. Why it's called body. I want to show you why it's called body. You can see the data we sent at the back end. The variable is called body. Understand? Understand? This is, the data is what we have in this stringify function. So what I'm going to do now, json.load request.body. So now we're going to check in for if the user is logged in. We're going to simply say if request dot user dot is underscore authenticated. Authenticated. So we're going to create a new variable called customer. Customer is going to be equal to requests dot user and we're gonna create the cats we're gonna call the cats I'm gonna say cats comma created should be equal what is wrong with me should be equal to let me I'm gonna show you if this is recording perfect should be equal to cats dot objects dot get or create get or create and this cat has an attribute called the cat has an attribute of what owner I'm gonna show you where this check our models at Wi Fi the cat has an attribute of owner I'm gonna set the owner to the logged in user so I'm gonna simply say owner should be equal to customer which is the logged in user equal to Customer, what am I doing? Whew. Owner should be equal to customer, and it also has this attribute called completed. In this time, we are getting the cards to the to the completed status when it is set to false. In this time, so we're going to say and completed should be equal to false so after we've done all this we're going to now check out for if and we also need to get the total the value we sent to the back end we sent some we sent the total value to the back end which is what we have here understand so we want to get that value so we're going to simply say total is equal to data the value is simply in this data so you want to assess the particular key for the, the particular attribute so we check the cat dot h checker.html from what we have here you can see we created in the function we have this form we have this variable called data data points to our total value understand and we have this key this key points to the total value so we're going to get this total value through the key called cat underscore total so go down to the views of pi 
uh, so Mr. Tota is equal to we're going to simply say square bracket cat underscore total is that after we've done this now we're going to now check if this total well, before we do that we want to make sure this is provided to a float make sure it's in decimal places you understand so just put this into parentheses and put float so I'm gonna, it has been converted to a float value perfect make sure this is recording on to be sure okay it's recording so now we're going to check if this total let me say if total is equal equal to the cat's grand total let's do to, to cat's dot grand total if they are equal if these are equal we want to make sure that the cats we want to make sure that the cats completed status understand we get cut by their completed status set to false so if the total is if they have the same if the total from the front end and the one we have on the back end are the same we want to set the cats attribute to true the cat completed attribute to true. I'm gonna simply say cat dot completed should be equal to true. I'm gonna simply save the cat. I'm gonna simply say cat dot cat dot save. So once we do all this, so once once all this is done, the payment is gonna take place. Understand? So we want to make sure this all all this is working very very fine. So after we've done this now. I want to send an alert go down to the checkout page where we have where we have this dot then the second one we are going to simply return an alert that says we're going to simply say alert we're going to say payments made successfully and we're going to return after this payment after this alert want to redirect back to the home page i'm going to simply do window we say window dot window dot location dot href should be equal to you know we want to we want to redirect back to the home page so i want to check out i want to check out the url for the home page the url is simply this store this store we have here the name attributes so i'm going to simply say you know, the checkout page rather i'm going to simply put in that same the what was it called again i can't remember the name let's simply say url should be equal to store this is the home page so that is it now once payment has been made, we're going to redirect back to the home page. I'm going to do a brief recap of I'm, I'm going to do a brief recap of what just happened here. Understand? So, after connecting the sandbox the sandbox account to I connected the sandbox account to the PayPal buttons we have on the page. So after I did that, how to create a function to like send this total price, the total we have to pay. To the back end so i'll add the idea also how to create a function at the bottom of the page create this function called make payment so this function simply helps to send this total to the back end understand so once you get to the what we so once you get to the back end we want to make sure that that the total from the front end is the same with what we have in the database so once it's the same we are going to make sure that the payments goes through we have to now set the comp the cuts to true. The cuts was, has been set to false. The completed attribute has been set to false. So we have to set it to true and make sure it is being saved. Everything is working fine. So after I did all this now, I have to make sure that this function is called whenever we want to make the payments. Whenever we click on the button, you can see I make sure the function is called on top here. Whenever I click on the button, whenever the payment wants to be made, the function is called. You understand? So that's what I did there. Everything should be working fine. Just save your work now. Go down to the browser now. The browser. Okay, now want to see want to see if everything is working perfectly well. Let's check if the if the PayPal is working well. So now we have three items in the cart. So now just go down to the cart page. Click on the cart icon. Okay, you can see we have three items and we have to pay a total of eighty two point eight six dollars. Okay, so now I'm gonna check out now. Click on the checkout button. Okay, 
it's still loading you're gonna have the paypal button and the debit or credit card button is still loading kind of taking some time okay the button has already appeared don't forget you can either pay through paypal or you can use your debit or credit card you can see those two options are working perfectly fine but in this video i'm going to be using paypal so now click on the paypal button on the paypal button okay it's kind of loading okay now i'm gonna just input my password this is, this is the personal account i created the sandbox personal account instead i'm gonna put in my password now okay login okay it's taking quite some time let's see okay it says we have to pay 82.86 dollars and that's the same thing what we have down here you understand so just scroll to the bottom of the page and click pay now you can see now is the, the payment has been processed we have this alert here saying payments made successfully if i click on ok we are being redirected back to the home page and you can see our cart is now empty that shows that we've made the payment everything went on successfully so that's it for this video i hope really you enjoyed it the source code is in the, is in the description of the video you find the source code there so thank you for watching i really love you guys don't forget to subscribe and like this video see you in the next video take care bye bye